you know, some of the most embarrassing times is, you know, right during a prayer and the, the phone go, goes off. You've always wanted to say God calling, but we be a little disrespectful, I guess. Scott, thank you for leading singing. You are you are doing good. Appreciate it. Had a great Scott. Scott, you're doing triple duty today. You had a great class this morning, and thank you for what you're doing. Also, this is pretty much self-explanatory, so I uh, just want to welcome those of you that are visitors. And if you're not a visitor, I want to welcome you anyway. And uh, we're kind of low today, uh, but we know there are so many things that are going on, illnesses and, and so forth. But welcome to Westside, the worship service, a wonderful group of Christians. I'm uh, going to talk about love this morning. You know, one of the hardest things that for me to do is to pick a topic. And uh, I had a topic, you know, working in the kitchen, I've had her doing my clothes. I've had her, well, I won't go too personal, but I wanted to talk about love. Now, we know there's three kinds of love. One of the most important subjects in the Bible, really, believe it or not, it's used 310 times. So it's got to be important. We have examples of love from God to men. We have examples of men to God. We have love from men to his neighbor. <clears throat> love comes from God to the church. Love from men to the church. And I, in this place, uh, the pronoun men is also meaning women. I started to put that in there, but it was about two o'clock this morning. <laughs> I was working on this, and I about didn't know how to spell women, so I'm teasing you about that. <laughs> but men in the subject form here also means women. But love from men to his family, love from God to the lost, <laughs> love from men to the lost all over scripture this is well emphasized 310 times John 4th uh, chapter verse 7 says beloved let us love one another for love is of God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God there's a song that is in the church that when we were in Kerrville this is actually one of the songs that they were singing and it's beautiful i don't know if it's any more beautiful than when there's about 30 of us singing here but it's a beautiful song maybe someday uh, we'll learn what it means well that was not a good statement who he who loves born and knows god and we'll talk more about being born again and what that means we also know in Scripture, 1 John 4, 8, He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. And I'm sure we've all seen examples of that. I don't need to really talk that much about it. 1 John 4, 12, No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and His love has been perfected in us. And that, of course, is the way we can see God. I hate to tell you guys this, that's not a good word. I want to tell you that this is the most, most loving church I've ever been in. Uh, you guys and gals, that's my talk, are just wonderful people. And we have a lot that are just not here today. We've, had, we've lost three families this year, and I know that we'll gain more. But you see love here every day. In 1 John 4.13, by this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. His spirit means so much. Scott, you mentioned part of that today in your lesson. It was just so good. What kind of person would ask, who is my brother? Well, you know, that's kind of cutting the edge of being about a worse person you could be. It would be a, a reprobate that would ask that. I, I think you know who the first reprobate was. It was Cain. 
and don't need to go into the story of Cain. I'm sure we all know it. Another reprobate, remember the lawyer who asked Jesus, you know, I've, I've done everything there is to do, and what do I need to please you, basically? And Jesus said, give all you have to the Lord. And that went over not very well. So let's start with the closest and dearest person you have. Now, this sermon may not apply to some of you, okay? I think you probably have an idea who I'm talking about, if, if you're a man, which you are. Reviving Romance by the Spirit. I, for some reason, God just really led me for this sermon. This may be a sermon you would say for Valentine's Day, but I didn't mean to hit that. Doesn't the Bible call marriage leading about a sister? You've probably never really thought about this. 1 Corinthians, it says, talking about we as men, we do not have the, we have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas. That may be some strange words to you, but in 1 Corinthians 9, 5, do we not, do we have no right to take along a believing wife, as do also the other apostles, the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? It's quite a story here about how they were encouraged to take their wives along uh, on their mission. Why is this topic this morning so important among us? Why do we need to emphasize the love toward your wife, my wife, when we love God? Well, the subject's valuable for all. Whether you're married, not married, too young. In my case, well, I'm not going to say too old. <laughs> Unmarried men present here, can present here, can learn how to start out maybe the right way again or we don't need to go into that very far. Those late in marriage can still improve as husbands. So I guess you can say really my message today is that we can all improve. And I'm not pointing a finger at anyone because I have three pointing back to me. God cares about our relationships, especially the relationships we have with our wives, guys. 1 Peter 3, 7. Husbands, Likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Now, I know with today's uh, feminine strike, I would probably be uh, in front of a firing squad for saying that the wives were the weaker vessel. I think we all really know what that means. And uh, I can tell you one thing, I married a girl from South Texas who was not a weaker value, a vessel, but a supporting vessel. It is one of our biggest testimonies. Children will not follow those with a monotonous marriage or marriages. You see that happening all the time. We can adorn the gospel of Christ by our marriages. People observe a lot. Others should follow and or ask about our marriages. John talks about 1 John 3, 17, but whosoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? I think we can answer that question. I didn't mean to go by that one. But anyway, I don't know how to back it up, so we'll look at John 3, 19. And by this we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. This is, of course, speaking of God. Are you able to see that love is the measure of your life by his spirit that is dwelling in you? Starting with marital love. How much do you love your wife? I don't expect anyone to hold up a hand in all of this, but I want us guys to consider this. How much do we love our wives? 
We must understand that the Bible tells us to love our wives. We may need to revive our love for our wives to serve God better. Are we given a good example to others of what it is to lead a sister in Christ? Do you want her to enter heaven like you? What are you doing to make your marriages more exciting? What are you doing to make your wife happier than before? 60th anniversary, we thank all of you for helping us celebrate ours. You know, there's been a whole lot of miles together, 10,950 days. And babe, that doesn't count the days that we were dating. <laughs> I'm not doing that in a braggadocious way. I'm just telling you, there were some... <clears throat> I'll be okay. There were some days that I was not a good husband. There were some days that we were at the bottom of the valley. Uh, guys, it's so easy to make mistakes, but it's wonderful to have a church and a family that prays for you and cares for you. Almost 10th anniversary, a few miles already, how exciting it is when you're young. Third week anniversary, not so many miles. How wonderful it is then. And I don't want any of you to think after 60 years, it's still not exciting. Ecclesiastes 9.9 says, live joyfully with your wife whom you love all the days of your life which he has given you under the sun all your days for that is your portion in life and the labor which you perform under the sun Proverbs 519 as a loving deer and a graceful doe let her satisfy you at all times and always be enraptured with her love Songs of songs. Sustain me with cakes of raisin. Refresh me with apples, for I am lovesick. And I hate to admit, I, none of that sounds too good to me. But <laughs> Sue knows what is good. And all of you ladies do. And we appreciate you so much. Song of songs for Solomon. My beloved put his hand by the latch of the door. And my heart yearned for him. <laughs> Do you know verb moves? This was part of Scott's lesson today. Mike talked about indi indicative or indicative. It means facts stated. You indicate something is true or whatever. The other one is imperative, order to do, like light a match imperative God commands love a perfect wife does it the verses to the women are indicative mood or indicative mood songs of songs set me as a seal upon your heart <clears throat> as a seal upon your arm for love is as strong as death Jealousy as cruel as the grave, its flames are flames of fire, a most vehement flame. Jealousy can run marriages, and we've seen that a lot. I don't need to preach about it. Song of Songs 8 7. Many waters cannot quench love, nor can the floods drown it. If a man would 
give for love all the wealth of his house, it would be utterly despised. How we love love. True merit of love, I would like to suggest is complimentary like when you were dating. Remember? True marital love flushes all bitterness for it is an act of total forgiveness. She's your companion. True marital love vulnerable to your spouse without any walls for protection. We have to be that way, guys. Tear down those walls. I know we've heard President Reagan say that. True marital love. Invest in the other as they <coughs> desire to dream without expectations. How wonderful it is to dream together. I tell you, I didn't mean to Anyway, I had another state there, and I, I don't know where this thing went. I'm sorry. <coughs> I apologize. My little children, let us not, <laughs> I tell you, oh, I, I found the reverse. <laughs> oh, gee. I am, okay. I have this enter and reset. It's really bad. Well, it's a good review. <laughs> Okay, songs two, five, sustain me. Um, okay, we had that one. My love, okay, we've had a, we've had that one. Okay, the verses to the women are in the key, indicative mood. A perfect wife does all of this. Uh, jealousy, we talked about that. Flooding love, you can't do it. True. Marital love, we've had this one. Okay, true marital love, number two, flushes out bitterness. True maternal love, vulnerable, my tongue won't go around that one. To your spouse without any walls for protection, tear the walls down. Okay, here we go. True maternal love. Invest in others as they desire or dream without expectations. Unselfish love dreams together. True <clears throat> marital love. Your spouse is a priority that exceeds all other duties or persons. Only God is number one. True maternal love, number six, does not settle for status quo or simply the end of hostilities. God does not teach us this in our marriage. True maternal love, the excitement of the chase and the conquest is you pursuing him or her. Oh, those were fun times. Don't quit, keep chasing. We just can't run as fast, guys. True maternal love. Love is always and only a choice. 
that those with the Spirit make. We are spiritual people. True maternal love is what you did the first time and would do again to remarry. How beautiful to respect or repeat your first love. True marital love does not let marriage become repugnant. The problem some of us may have. True marital love, secret service does will take a bullet for a man that they don't even know. Would you take it for her? I think I know the answer to that here. True marital love knows how many sins Satan will use to destroy the marriage. Pray that God will help you be true to her. True marital love. A day is not a burden or a chore, but a, tri a privilege and an opportunity. She loves to have you around most of the time. <laughs> True marital love is constantly the same rather than moody or ruled by emotions. Men, are we learning? True marital love is desperate, diligent, eager, excited, creative to please a spouse. Let her and only her satisfy you. True marital love is doting, ravishing, kind, sexual, sacrificial, obsessed. Remember the first time. A lot of first times. First time you held her head. Efforts by spouse are noticed, appreciated, praised, and returned. I don't know where I came up with that word. Are you contem complimenting? Complimenting. <laughs> Thank you, hon. True marital love, expectations and reservations will deny your love's feelings. Nothing will work at all if you cross those bridges. First works, works. I came up with a list of some things that say so many things, I can't say them. Appearance. We could probably start with that, and, and this includes us guys. I know sometimes I've looked pretty scroungy, but we'll, we don't need to go very deeply into that one. Compliments. What are the compliments, guys, we can have? I had to think of the commercial we had here a while back on TV. This guy's wife put on her nice new dress and she walked in front of her husband and said, Honey, do I look fat in this dress? Of course, the guy was reading something about fishing or something. He said, Yes. How do you think that went? <laughs> It was pretty bad. Anyway, compliments. Priorities. What are your priorities? We have so many different areas we could go into that. Gifts. It doesn't have to be a new car. I'd, some of these commercials really blow my mind. Guys give a wife a $80,000 car. Well, that's nice, but what is a better gift that you ladies like? 
<laughs> he, it's so much. Just to thank you. But we consider that. Another thing is time. Spend time with your love. Patient. This is a king-sized one. Forgiveness. That's one of the most important things is to forgive. Creative. Wow. Can you think of all the things that that fits? Laughing. I don't know about you guys, but Sue and I love to laugh it together. Not at each other. Well, yeah, we do. <laughs> I cannot hear with one ear and I'm deaf in the other. And Sue is both of them. And the things we say to each other, I may say, honey, I love you. And she'll say, you did what to the garden? <laughs> and we, we have, anyway. As you get older, there are some things you will laugh at or you'll be miserable. Attentive, listen. And I just said it's kind of hard for us, but anyway. Compromising. I know some of you have seen marriages that it's my way or the highway. Compromising hurts. Holding. From holding hands to just putting your arm around each other. Hold each other. Eager. One thing that I fell in love with Sue, <laughs> she was always eager, anxious, ready to go. And we won't go any further than that. Praying. The most special thing together that you can do as husband and wife is pray together. You know, something else that has just built our marriage so much here lately is we go to YouTube and we do the chronological Bible reading together. And it's just so rewarding to read the Bible together. I know a lot of you have jobs and you just can't do it, but I'm glad that uh, we have that. Passion. There are all kinds of passion. Uh, numerous ways of being passionate. Even if you're 82 years old. <coughs> Pursuit. Pursuit. Again, so many things. Each one of these could be a, ser a sermon of its own. But pursued happiness for your loved one. Obsession. Obsession is, is good to have if it's for your wife. Remember, it is the Holy Spirit that bears real love in each of us. When we are baptized, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And... I just, it's a wonderful thing to have. It helps you with everything that we've talked about today. So your spouse, John 4.12 said, No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us. And His love has been perfected in us. John 1.4.3 By this we know that we abide in Him and He in us because He has given us His Spirit. Those who are truly saved will love others by His Spirit. Loving others the way God expects is by His mighty power that's in each of us. Start with your spouse, the one you chose, the easiest one to love, don't you think so? Husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers may not be hindered. And I don't know why it jumped like it did, but that <laughs> I'd like that to be the end of my lesson. Uh, we have an invitation uh, song, and if any, and if any of you need uh, prayers of the church, or there's a little card that you can fill something out on, or if you need to be baptized, we can arrange that. But I want to thank all of you for bearing with me. I'm sorry, 
a little emotional, but uh, how many days were that? 10,000 <laughs> 10, days together, and I would rate them as probably 99% good. It's, you know. So anyway, let's have Scott start our song, and thank you for giving me the grace to listen to Please stand as we 